Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Also, if you are new, welcome. I am super excited for today's video. I have been keeping track of questions and stuff you guys have been sending in so that I could do this how to keep your house clean tips and tricks video. Now, a lot of these tips and tricks are things that I do to maintain a clean house. Some of these are things that I have found online that other um like professionals <laughs> it, you could say have mentioned about keeping a clean home and we're going to go over them. I have a bunch of tips and tricks here so I'm going to jump on this right away because I know keeping a clean house can be a challenging task but I also know with some organization and some consistency it can become a lot more manageable. So we are starting off with tip number one, which is creating a cleaning schedule. Now, when I say cleaning schedule, this can very much change from person to person. I have to say, I think this is probably the hardest tip because it takes some trial and error to figure it out. Your life is not my life, so exactly what I do to stay consistent and have my schedule may not work for you. Um, some of us have kids, some of us don't have kids, some of us have spouses, some of us don't. Um, some of us work from the home, outside of the home, or just stay-at-home parents. Like There are so many different factors when it comes to someone's life that... This may take you some time to figure out what works best for you, but once you have a cleaning schedule figured out and you can stick to it, it's going to make a world of difference. The next one I talk about all the time with you guys, and it's so very important, and it's definitely one of these things that gets easier the more and more you do it, but declutter regularly. This then prevents the unnecessary buildup of too many things. I have definitely found that over the years of decluttering, because um, I've started decluttering like, I don't know, I want to say I really started decluttering seven years ago. Um, but once I started, like, and it wasn't a lot all at once, um, but little by little, and I realized it made cleaning so much easier because... I wasn't trying to clean around all this unnecessary stuff. Clutter can be so taxing mentally on you, and a lot of people don't even realize. I say regularly when Bobby and I are talking about certain family members, how they feel so stressed out, and I'm constantly telling them, I'm like, I wish they would just declutter and clean their home because I feel like the rest of their life it would help with the stress and anxiety if their home was less stressful and anxious. And this is coming from someone that deals with pretty severe um, anxiety and depression at times. Like, these are things I have found help my anxiety and depression because I deal with it. I know I just talked to you guys a couple weeks about how I was having a week. I was in a really dark place. Like, I was struggling but I knew if I didn't stick to my cleaning schedule and stay on top of things, it would make it a lot worse. So as hard as it is to get up and get things done when I'm in those moments, I also know in the long run, it saves me a lot. All right, so I know this next one is, I don't know, it can be kind of controversial for people. Like, a lot of people do not see a need for this whatsoever, um, and that is when making your schedule what that works for you is very important, but I feel like this is important, and if you had just tried it for 30 days, you would notice a big difference. Or it's small, and it may seem like something like, oh, it's not worth it, but... I do challenge you for 30 days to make your bed every morning. It is one of those things of it's not so much having a made bed as much as starting off your day with accomplishing something right away that I think is what makes such a big difference. Um, 
I also personally, the reason why I love making my bed every single day is I have three kids and my house gets loud sometimes and crazy. And there are just times that I'm like, I need five minutes (laughs) to go into my room and just relax. And I can't relax in a messy place area. So I make my bed every morning. That way if I need to go in there and just sit on the sofa or lay on the bed, I can truly take five minutes to myself and really relax. And I think any mama can relate to that statement. All right. So going on though, wipe down kitchen counters and appliances daily. I'm going to tweak this a little bit because when it comes to appliances, I don't wipe down every single appliance daily. That, like, certain appliances I wipe down daily. Certain ones need to. I notice that the fridge, um, and not even the entire fridge, but the handles, things like that, the areas that are touched frequently need a quick wipe down. Um... The stove on top is going to need a quick wipe down, but I don't wipe down every single appliance every single day, but I think this more has to do with those high traffic areas that get dirty. Doing just a little tidy on them every single day makes it a lot easier to stay on top of it. So same with your counters. My kitchen island gets wiped down probably 10 times a day. Um, Where the rest of the counter is in the kitchen, probably twice. Um, But it's me staying on top of those obviously more high frequent areas. Going on with staying on top of high frequent areas, the next one is sweep or vacuum high traffic areas daily. Um, And I say high traffic because I know floors can be very overwhelming to a lot of people. Um, So if you can just focus on the main areas. So biggest thing usually is kitchen. uh, Anywhere that the kids are eating. So kitchen, dining room, um, front door or where I actually more than front door. I don't know about you, but my front door is in a high traffic area. It's actually my, uh, laundry room door that goes to the garage, that area that I need to clean on a daily. Cause there's constant people coming in and out. Um, but if you can, once again, just stay on the high traffic areas and then once a week, once every two weeks, that's when you deal with the bedrooms and the bathrooms and those other areas. It's a lot less overwhelming. So I know with having a big family and having animals, one of your guys' biggest questions I get on the regular basis is keeping the house smelling nicely. So one of those things is going to be emptying the trash regularly. I don't like having giant trash cans in the house because you don't take them out as often and that just starts getting stanky. I also know like if I am going to um, do certain projects, so clean out the fridge or stuff like that, that after I do it, that goes out immediately. Like if I'm dealing with something stinky, I empty that trash can immediately. That is going to make a huge difference. The other thing is staying on top of laundry. Now, a lot of people say do one load of laundry a day. I say what do, do what makes sense for you and your family. So for us, I don't do a load of laundry every single day. I probably do a load of laundry every other day. But what I have found that works well for us is we have laundry baskets for almost everybody in the house. So Xander has a laundry basket in his room. That way, when that laundry basket is full, I know that's a load of laundry that can get ran. Plus, I'm trying to teach him responsibility and how to do his own laundry. So it makes it a little bit easier that he knows when that's full, we empty it and do a load of laundry. Um, Freya, (laughs) you can see her here. She was having a lot of fun helping me, my little princess sidekick. Um... She does not have a laundry basket, mainly because she's tiny. (laughs) Like, her clothes, it would take a lot of her clothes to make a load. So her stuff kind of just gets sprinkled in with 
everyone's loads. Um, <laughs> so yes, uh, Bjorn has his own laundry basket and then Bobby and I have a laundry basket. Our laundry basket probably is about two loads by the time that I usually end up doing it because it's usually Bobby's clothes, my clothes, towels. Like when it comes to our stuff, it's a more of a hodgepodge of everything. But definitely staying on top of laundry will keep your house smelling better. Um, another great thing to do is use doormats. I have doormats throughout my house in high traffic areas and it really does like reduce the amount of dirt that comes into your house. So we have it right by the garage. Like I said, that's a common area people come in and out. So it's by the garage. Um, we have some by the pool areas on the outside to help prevent so much dirt coming in. But if you guys can keep doormats in high traffic areas, you will notice less dirt and grime coming inside. Obviously, the best thing to do is to try and get people to leave their shoes off in your house. Um, I don't know about you. Like, I love the idea of no shoes in the house, but I also don't like to nag and complain at people. <laughs> and I feel like if I told everyone and just started this whole no shoe thing there'd be a lot of nagging going on and that would affect my mental health so I prefer not to do that to save my peace of mind <laughs> and if you get it you get it so there are certain things that yes if you can implement a no shoes in the house rule or at least and I did do this at our old house no shoes upstairs that was a rule I did at the old house. I did not want people wearing their shoes up those stairs where we were carpeted in the house. It makes a big, big difference. But don't feel bad if you're like, I just don't want to deal with the drama of constantly nagging at the kids and the husband and guests to take off their shoes. I get it. I am the same way. So I actually just had one of you guys comment this just the other day, so I had to throw it on here, um, but someone made the comment of they hate dusting because they feel like they have to go back and do it right away, like it's built up so quickly in their house. But this is a big one. Dust surfaces regularly because it, it feels like a never-ending task, but Honestly, like if you would just do a little bit every single day, it does build up, but it's not as insane. Like I have been to people's houses where there is just like major buildup of dust and you don't want to get to that point. So I know it is one of those tasks. It's like laundry and dishes and wiping down counters where it can be like, I don't know why I do this when it's dirty again within like three seconds. But it does make a difference. It really, really does just to stay on top of it. Um, ooh, this is a big one. Use storage solutions to keep items organized and out of sight. You guys know how much I love my baskets. My baskets for my blankets and um, toys and any little thing. I love them. I think that is like the best trick if you are a mama and you have little kids, because let's be honest, the older boys, like Xander and Bjorn, they don't play with a lot of little toys anymore. Freya, on the other hand, she has a lot, <laughs> and she's going to have a lot for a bit because she's at that age, but to have wicker baskets or pretty baskets to be able to put her toys in, that way when guests are coming over, it may not look like we have children other than the handprints on the windows, um, but... It's still easily accessible for her. Those are game changers. Love them. It's also such peace of mind where when she goes to bed, I can quickly, or actually I normally make her tidy up her toys, but quickly tidy up her toys and I can sit and relax and not be surrounded by toys. So storage solutions that are pretty, those are game changers in my book. Um, clean out the refrigerator and pantry, pantry regularly. I also touch on this on a regular basis of how 
I try and wipe out my refrigerator every single week. I may not completely tear it apart every single week, but at least once a week, I like to at least give it a really good wipe down, usually right before groceries get delivered. And just it makes keeping up with it easier. And then same with the pantry. Just staying on top of it makes it where what used to take me, and this is my personal experience, I used to do the pantry, let's say, once every six months. That was realistic. And it would take me hours because I had to pull everything out, clean everything. And everything was such a hot mess that it just took me forever to go through it. Now, if I am going to do my pantry, I can do it in 10 minutes. I quickly pull stuff out and just move the couple things that might have been put in the wrong place and then put it all back and I am done. So if you can do quick tidies more often on your refrigerator and your pantry, it makes the process in the long run so much easier. I have also gotten to where I am buying less things. Like I am trying to not worry about having the perfectly aesthetically uh, packed refrigerator. Like you're not going to look at my fridge and be like, oh my goodness, it's perfectly aesthetically filled with all the exact amount of yogurts and cheese sticks and fruit and vegetables. Like I have those things in there, but I buy it all more sparingly so that I have less food waste. That has been a big thing for me this year is less food waste. And by buying less it's made it a lot easier. Like I really, really, really try and be more cautious of what we are doing. I'm trying to do more leftover nights more often. We actually just did that yesterday. All of these things to really stay on top of it. Um, so another big one though is going to be wiping down your bathroom surfaces daily. I know this is another one where people uh, get really overwhelmed in their bathrooms but if you get on the habit, and I'm not saying scrub your entire bathroom every single day, but just go in there and wipe down the counters and the sink and clean the toilet inside. I'm not saying the entire toilet outside, but if you can at least wipe down counters and sinks and then scrub the inside of your toilet, it's probably a two minute project to get that done you're going to notice a big difference on your bathroom. And then when you go in there and do a little bit deeper of a cleaning, it's not overwhelming and you don't have the stink that bathrooms can get, especially if it's a kid's bathroom <laughs> because kids be stanky. Alright, so raise your hand if you have a Monica's closet or a Monica's room. <laughs> I feel like we all do. We all have those areas in our house that are just overly cluttered. Um, so one big thing is clean out your closets and donate, donate items you no longer use regularly. I know this is uh, similar with before talking about decluttering on a regular basis, but I feel like that Monica closet and that Monica room are the ones that we often purposefully ignore. And I had someone ask the other day what to do with those type of areas. Like, do you neglect your daily chores to get that stuff done? I personally do. If I have a big project, something that's going to take me a long time, I will neglect my daily chores to tackle that big project for the day. Um, but the other thing is like, we do not make the house messy ourselves, and we need to get to where we delegate. There is nothing wrong about asking your husband for help about making the kids help. And often it doesn't take much. I all the time tell my kids, Hey, let give mama a five minute tidy of this house because I'm going crazy. This house is overwhelming me. And if you all give me five minutes, I'm going to feel so much better and it's going to keep mama in a better mood. So try that with your family. I feel like that's a big area and it'll help you tackle the 
harder areas. If you can, one, focus on those harder areas and have reliable people who can help you with the rest of the house, it makes it a lot easier. Um, The other thing is going to be vacuuming and sweeping under furniture and in corners regularly. Now, this doesn't need to be done as regularly as some other vacuuming and stuff, but, and we've all fallen victim to it, how many of us have moved a sofa and there is probably a year's worth of dust, dog hair, toys that have been missing for ages under those sofas, and it is nasty. If we do it a little bit more regularly, one... Your house is going to smell nicer and your allergies are probably not going to be nearly as severe. Uh, But two, it is just a lot easier to clean it up. It's not fun when it gets really, really bad and now you're having to vacuum. Usually when it gets that bad, you got to like scrub on your hands and knees because normally there's some sticky stuff under there that has to really get good and moved around. Um, So staying on top of moving your... Uh, furniture and getting like the corners and the baseboards vacuumed regularly. And when I say regularly, once a month. If you could go around once a month and do this, it's going to make a massive, massive difference. Uh, This one though is huge. Wash dishes or load the dishwasher after every meal. Yes, every meal. I did not have a dishwasher for many, many years. Uh, Bobby and our first house did not have a dishwasher. Uh, We finally got a dishwasher, like, right before we sold the house uh, because we figured it would help with selling it. But for many years, we did not have a dishwasher, and we had a tiny kitchen. Like, it was so small that you really didn't have an option but to stay on top of the dishes. Otherwise, it would be a disaster. Um, So if you can load the dishwasher or wash your dishes after every meal, it's also just a lot less daunting than having the big pile up of dishes. Um, Now you may be like me though, and you don't like cleaning at night. And if that is you and it makes you happy to wait till the morning, I'm not going to judge you on it. But I will say I don't start breakfast the next day till the night before is completed. So I feel like you guys might start realizing that there is a trend to my list of maintaining a clean house. Uh, With this next one, it's going to be cleaning out your microwave and oven regularly. If you haven't caught the trend, keep listening. If you have caught the trend, let me know in the comments below. Uh, But cleaning out your microwave and oven regularly, just like things we've mentioned before, is staying on top of it makes it easier in the long run. So instead of letting the oven get so nasty, it's going to take overnight oven cleaner and stuff like that it's just one of those things that it makes it less daunting you can stay on top of it and it does make it easier in the long run once again I'm not saying you have to clean your oven every single day but if you can just get it to let's say you're doing it every six months so instead of every six months let's do it once a month it's going to make it a lot easier in the long run Uh, Rotating seasonal items to keep storage areas organized. This is huge if you have small closets. Uh, But I've also seen a lot of people do this with kids toys of rotating toys. I know I personally do not do that. I declutter my kids toys regularly because I feel like they have so much stuff that if I have to rotate their toys... Um, it means they got too much stuff, but I do know a lot of mamas that do it and it really, really does help. So rotating seasonal clothing, rotating toys, those are all things that are going to help keep your storage areas more organized. Um, wipe down light switches and doorknobs regularly. 
how many times I have gone into a house and just seen the buildup on the light switches and doorknobs and it is gross but easy to do because if you think how many times a day are you touching those doorknobs and light switches and you're touching the exact same spot multiple times a day so if you can go around and just take a Lysol wipe once a week and quickly wipe all those things down it's a huge help and it's going to keep that like grime and like I said it builds up quickly um my kids bedrooms and bathrooms are the two areas that I am like meticulous on because they're really good at going outside playing being full of dirt and mud and then touching all those things and those areas of the house just get a lot dirtier a lot quicker so doing that um definitely will make a bigger difference if you do it on a regular basis compared to once every six months or just spring cleaning because I know that's like a big thing on a spring cleaning checklist. Uh, clean windows and mirrors regularly. This is another thing especially in those bathrooms. <laughs> How many of us get those toothpaste spit marks? I know it's gross but let's be realistic kids are gross <laughs> it happens uh but also like actual windows I love cleaning my windows on a regular basis I don't clean them all at once because that would be extremely overwhelming uh if you follow me you know I like to rotate cleaning my windows so I may do our bedroom this week and then the family room and kitchen area the next week and then the kids bedrooms but I keep it on a regular basis because I love the natural light and it just there's something about having clean windows that I feel like makes the whole house feel clean. So this kind of goes with cleaning your windows, um, but dusting blinds and curtains regularly. I also find that this is something to keep your house smelling nice if you have curtains like me. I don't love blinds. I've mentioned that on a regular basis, but if you love blinds, if you get one of those horse hair attachments for your vacuums and just once a week quickly go over them, it'll make a world of difference. Blinds get so so dusty and grimy and it's one of those areas that I feel like is really easy to neglect and then we are kicking ourselves. <laughs> I've gotten so many questions about how to clean blinds and they're not easy and they're tedious having to go over each and every blind that if you stay on top of dusting your blinds it's going to make life so much easier and on top of that try and not have blinds in your kitchen. That's going to be my biggest tip for anyone that likes blinds is don't put them in your kitchen because your kitchen is going to have grease and grime and that is going to be the area that's going to be the hardest to keep blinds clean. Um, so if you can keep blinds out of the kitchen, I highly, highly recommend that. Um, now let's talk about our garage and our basements. Obviously, being in Florida, we don't have a basement anymore, but for many, many years we had a basement. Definitely very important to stay on top of your garage and basement. Um, even if it's only twice a year, once a year, going through it and really decluttering it and organizing it and cleaning it out. It can get so overwhelming so quickly. I know so many people that have two, three car garages that they can't even get a car into because it's so cluttered and they're now at a point of just being so extremely overwhelmed that they don't even know where to start. So staying on top of those areas at least once a year will make a massive, massive difference. Uh, talking about mopping floors, uh, sweep and mopping the floors. If you can do your entire house at least once a week, uh, more often if you have kids and stuff. So for me, I use my robot um, or my vacuum mop daily. Every single day I use that thing. 
And then once a week, I try and go through the entire house with my actual mop. I feel like it makes a bigger difference. It's more of a deep clean um, and it just stays on top of it. So if you can do that regularly of, like I said, high traffic areas, you're going to want to do that daily. Your kitchen, whatever door you come in and out of on the regular, if you can do that daily and then weekly deal with the rest of the house, it'll make it a lot simpler in the long run. Uh, cleaning ceiling fans and light fixtures regularly. You guys know my thing with ceiling fans, especially the one in our bedroom. It gets so dusty so quickly and it's really easy to forget. We love ceiling fans. We have a ceiling fan in pretty much every room of our house. Uh, something about the airflow and stuff. We just love it in our house, but it's really easy to forget to clean those areas if you keep them on all the time because you look up and you're not seeing the dust and dirt and then that day comes around when you turn it off and you look up and it looks like there's a giant clump of dust that's going to fall on your face while you're laying in bed. <laughs> so staying on top of your ceiling fans and light fixtures definitely makes it easier in the long run. Um, especially light fixtures. I feel like bathroom light fixtures are often neglected and forgot about. But if you stay on top of them, they're really not that hard to stay on top of. All you need to do is use some sort of duster. You guys know I love my Swiffers and dust them regularly. And then once a month, take the light fixture apart, throw it in your dishwasher and you are good to go. And you're not going to have that crazy buildup that often turns into rust and the deterioration of your light fixtures in the long run. So moving on to air quality, especially with having pets here, are a couple of tips that we really stay on top of. Um, one of those things is changing air filters in your house on a regular basis. Um, so the way we do it is Bobby dates our filters um, so that he stays on top of it. But nowadays they've got subscriptions and everything to make it like so much easier to stay on top of it that that is something that if you can just stay on top of replacing your air filters, huge, huge difference in smell of your home, health of your home, all of those things. But also washing bedding and blankets of your pets regularly. So you guys have seen me wash this couch on a regular basis because it is pretty much Bailey's bed. <laughs> um, but I try and stay on top of cleaning their toys, cleaning um, their bedding, their blankets, all of those things. Anything that has to do with the animals, stay on top of it to keep your house smelling clean and fresh. And then stay on top of your own bedding and blankets regularly. I said this in a previous video, but if you can wash your bedding and towels and linens before guests come over, your house will smell amazing. And I feel like the way your house smells when guests come over is like one of the biggest things. All right. I have so many more tips and stuff that I have written down, but I am running out of time because I am a blabber mouth and I like to go into detail when I give these tips and trick videos. So if you guys enjoyed today's video and you want the rest of my tips that are on that I have written down that I did not have time to get to, uh, let me know in the comments below. Like I said, I have bunch more tips and tricks that I could share with you guys to help maintain a clean home. And if you guys want to hear them, just let me know and we will do a part two today to today's uh, keeping your house clean video. But hopefully you guys enjoyed and I will see you Friday. Bye.